Noctua is one of the most highly regarded companies in the PC cooling industry. Their products, including CPU coolers, fans, and thermal compound, are all very well rated and stand among the most highly performing products on the market, with a serious emphasis on quietness. Even though Noctua already has some of the quietest fans available, eventually the only way to make a cooler even quieter is to ditch the fans altogether. That's what Noctua has done here, with the NHP1 Passive Cooler. Fanless PC cooling has long been a small niche within the broader PC industry. Noctua has a very large and loyal following, and they are positioned as well as any company to create a premium fanless CPU cooler and bring the idea of fanless cooling to a much broader audience. The NHP1 was first introduced as a prototype at the Computex Computer Expo in June of 2019. Noctua took the two years since then to refine and manufacture a unique and highly optimized fanless cooler. The cooling fins for optimal fanless cooling have to be significantly thicker than standard cooling fins, and Noctua had to develop a new manufacturing process to produce the thicker fins. The final product is 158mm tall, 154mm wide, and 152mm deep. It weighs about 1.2 kilograms so it is definitely one of the largest and heaviest CPU coolers out there. It also comes at a price, retailing for about $110 in the US. Noctua's early prototype claimed to be able to cool about 120 watts, but Noctua does not provide a TDP or power use rating for its coolers. Instead, they provide an extensive CPU compatibility list with one of several compatibility classifications listed for each CPU. The highest power Intel Rocket Lake CPU listed for compatibility without any restrictions is the 65 watt, 6 core i5-11600. None of AMD's Vermeer CPUs are listed with full compatibility with no restrictions. Even the 65 watt, 6 core Ryzen 5 5600X. Just looking at Noctua's compatibility list for the P1, you might not think that this cooler is very capable in fanless mode, but Noctua seems to be somewhat conservative with this list. I want to put this cooler to the test to see exactly what it can and cannot handle, with zero fans. My test setup included the Fractal Design Meshify 2 Compact case with all fans and dust filters removed, Intel i5-11400 and AMD Ryzen 5 5600X CPUs, ASUS ROG Strix Z590A and B550F motherboards, 64GB of 3200MHz memory from Mushkin, a 120GB Western Digital Green 2.5-inch SSD, a C-Sonic Prime Fanless PX450 power supply, and an ASUS Fanless GT710 graphics card for use with the AMD CPU. The latest version of Windows 10 was installed, Prime95 was used to stress the CPUs, and Hardware Info 64 was used to track power use and temperatures. The ambient room temperature was recorded before and after each test. I decided to test five possible orientations with the Intel CPU, and only the standard orientation with the AMD CPU. Each test included five half-hour runs of Prime95's torture test with small FFTs, and CPU power limits set to each 15 watt interval between 35 watts and 95 watts. The power limits were changed quickly between each run to maintain as much heat in the cooler as possible, with the goal of getting to heat saturation as quickly as possible in each run. Microsoft Excel was used to process and interpret the thermal data. With this data I can estimate a maximum CPU power use allowable while avoiding any thermal throttling. Noctua did send this cooler to me with one of their quiet 120mm fans, but I decided not to test it since I specialize in fully fanless systems only, and I'm sure many other reviewers will cover that quite well. Here's a summary of the processed data for the Intel i5 CPU. The y-axis is the stressed CPU core temperature normalized for a 25 degree Celsius ambient room temperature and the x-axis is the CPU power limit as set up in the BIOS. The trend lines fit very well which gives me a good amount of confidence in this data. 
it is immediately clear that the orange and yellow orientations performed the worst, with maximum power limits of around 80 watts at 100 degrees. These two orientations have the cooling fins in a horizontal layout, and since we are not using any fans in the system, the air that is heated by the cooler does not have an easy path upward and away from the cooler. The standard and upside down orientations were tested with the side panel on, and the lying flat orientation was tested with the side panel off to simulate a horizontal case with effective ventilation above the cooler. These three orientations have the fins in a vertical layout, and the results are much better. All three performed similarly, with allowable power limits of close to 120 watts, which exactly matches Noctua's early claims about the cooler. These results really emphasize the importance of orienting the cooler fins in a vertical layout when used without any fans. Next, I tested the AMD Ryzen 5 5600X in the standard orientation only, with vertical cooling fins. These results were not quite as good as they were with the Intel CPU, but still impressive. The maximum allowable power limit to avoid throttling indicated here is just below 100 watts. One reason for this difference is that the AMD CPU had to be run with a small graphics card underneath the cooler. I did not expect this larger difference though, because the GT710 graphics card is very small and low power. Even in this case however, for the 80 watt and 95 watt tests, the 5600X ran all cores continuously at or above base clock, at 3.7 and 3.85 GHz respectively. This demonstrates that Noctua is being at least somewhat conservative with their CPU compatibility list. I will continue to test this cooler with another AMD CPU when I put it head to head against a few other coolers operated without fans. So can the NHP1 handle the heat? Well yes, for what it set out to do in a fully fanless setup, these results are extremely impressive. Of course, there are limitations with this cooler in passive mode as there are with any fanless cooling solution. But if silence is important to you, don't let that dissuade you. As with any fanless computer, I highly recommend taking advantage of the CPU power limit settings that both Intel and AMD make available via the motherboard BIOS. Even if you wanted to use a Ryzen 9 5950X, you can do so safely with AMD's Precision Boost Overdrive PPT setting, while minimizing performance loss. For more info on this topic, check out my previous video on CPU power limits. The NHP1 is a fantastic product, turning the dream of a truly high-end, fully silent PC into reality. There are a few things to keep in mind when configuring a system with this cooler though. When you take out one source of noise, such as CPU cooling fans, the other sources of noise in your PC will become more noticeable. So, I recommend using this cooler only with other fanless or at least semi-fanless components, and without any spinning hard drives or optical drives. Fanless power supplies are becoming more common, and fanless graphics cards are possible up to 75 watts for a tower-style case. Another thing to keep in mind is the sheer size of this cooler. It was very well designed with compatibility in mind, but you can still have some difficulty with micro ATX or mini ITX motherboards and cases. Luckily, the memory slots can be fully accessible, but the top PCIe slot may or may not be accessible depending on the positioning of the CPU socket and top PCIe slot. Thirdly, the case will make a big difference in how well this passive cooler will perform. Make sure to choose a case that has plenty of ventilation available in the top panel above the CPU cooler. Cases designed for bottom to top airflow are ideal. Noctua has a great compatibility list on their website for recommended cases with the P1. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more fanless PC content, and join my Patreon to see details of every one of my fanless PC builds.